Here is a basic looking math problem that a lot of people are going to get wrong. Okay, so without using a calculator, let's see if we can figure out the answer. So we have the square root of 64 divided by 1 half times 2. Now we do have a multiple choice question here, and let's take a look at our answers. So A is 8, B is 16, C is 32, and D is 64. Okay, so if you want to give this problem a try, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you exactly why this problem is so tricky and, of course, how to do it correctly. But before we get started, let me tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below, and if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so one more time, here is the problem. We have the square root of 64 divided by 1 half times 2, and one of these down here is the correct answer. Now, before I get into the full solution to this problem, Let's go ahead and take a look at the correct answer. So once again, we have the square root of 64 divided by 1 half times 2. This does not seem like a difficult problem without using your calculator. But a lot of you are going to get the wrong answer. So the correct answer is C32. Now, if you got 8, 16, or the square root of 64, I can tell you right now, you are definitely not alone. And the number one reason why people get this problem wrong is they really don't understand something called the order of operations because we have different mathematical operations here. We have division, we have multiplication, we have a square root, and then of course we have a fraction. So the correct answer again is 32. And if you got that right, I definitely have to give you a nice little happy face and an A+. Plus. That is fantastic. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the correct order of operations before we get into the actual solution to this problem. So here is a nice little pop quiz for you. Now, some of you are actually going to get this problem wrong. So here we have 10 divided by 2 times 5. So without using a calculator, just use mental math. Go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Now, if you got one as your answer, that is fantastic because I'm so happy that you found this video. Okay, one is the wrong answer. Okay, now how could you get one from this problem? Well, it's easy. So a lot of you probably said, well, two times five, that's 10. So 10 divided by 10 is one, which makes a lot of sense. Unfortunately, it is wrong. Okay, so the correct answer is what? Well, the first thing that we need to do here is division. So 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 5 times 5 is 25. So 25 is the correct answer. So clearly, we have to do division before multiplication in this problem. But why is that? Well, the reason why is this little acronym right here called PEMDAS, and that is what I'm going to quickly go over. And once we understand PEMDAS, we'll be able to easily solve our problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about PEMDAS. Now, PEMDAS is an acronym, right? So these letters stand for something. And really, this is a checklist that goes from left to right. Now, I'm going to tell you what these letters mean in just one second. But before I do, I'm going to give you a nice little memory aid. And that is this. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. One more time, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So that is a little kind of mnemonic, a little memory aid that will help you remember PEMDAS, which is a checklist that goes from left to right so that we can follow the correct order of operations in a problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about this right now. So the P here stands for parentheses, but really, P stands for grouping symbols. So we can group numbers together by parentheses like this or brackets like that, or even these type of little squiggly brackets. So here I have 10 divided by two times five. If I wanna group these numbers together, I can use parentheses or some other grouping symbol. Now, the way this parentheses actually works in a problem 
is that if you have parentheses inside of brackets, inside of another set of brackets, what you have to do here when you are looking at the order of operations is start with the innermost parentheses and continue to work your way out. Okay, so that is what P stands for. Now, sometimes you will not have parentheses in a math problem, but what you're gonna do is simply scan your problem from left to right and if you have any of these things, well, then you're going to go ahead and do those steps. Now, E stands for exponents, but you can think of this as powers. So if you had 2 to the third power, this little 3 up here is called an exponent, and the 2 is called a base. So 2 to the third power means take 2 and multiply it by itself 3 times. So, of course, that is 8. Now, it's a little bit of a twist in this particular problem because we're going to have to think about exponents and we have a square root, right? We have the square root of 64. Now, one thing that you can, uh, one thing that's really important to know about square roots is that you can actually think of a square root as a power, okay? So the square root of 64 is actually equal to 64 to the one half power. So we have an exponent in this particular problem and uh, it's really not quite obvious. So if you ever wondered where square roots fit into the order of operations or PEMDAS, really, it is an exponent. Okay, so this is E. Now, the next thing here is M, D, A, and S. Now, let me go ahead and just tell you what this stands for. So, M is multiplication, D is division, A is addition, and S is subtraction. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. U2 Math Man, according to your checklist here, we have to do multiplication next, right, from left to right. So in this problem, it makes sense to do this multiplication right here. Okay, so in other words, 10 divided by the product of 2 times 5, which of course is 10. So why isn't the answer 1? Well, this is not the way PEMDAS works. So what you're going to do next is any multiplication or division, whatever you see first from left to right. And this right here is probably one of the most confused areas of the order of operations. So here we have 10 divided by 2 times 5. So what do we see first from left to right? Well, we have both division and multiplication, but what we see first from left to right is division, and that's why we have to do division first. So 10 divided by 2, of course, is 5, and now, now we have 5 times 5, which is 25. Okay, so after all multiplication and division, you'll finish up with any addition and subtraction, and it works the same way as multiplication and division. This is a group. Okay, so if you understand PEMDAS and the order of operations, well, understanding how to solve this problem will be very easy. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve the problem. And what you want to do if you're new at basic math or you forgot basic math is maybe write out a PEMDAS acronym, a little checklist there, so you can kind of follow this strictly from left to right. Okay, so let's just kind of look at our PEMDAS and start asking questions. So the first thing is, do we have any parentheses in this problem? No, there are no parentheses or any other grouping symbols. So what we're going to do is simply move on to the next step. And the next step is exponents. Okay, so do we have any exponents? Well, technically we do. We have this square root of 64. So square roots will be here with the exponent part of PEMDAS. Again, we can write the square root of 64 as 64 to the 1 half power, and this is an exponent. So the first thing that we need to do is find out what the square root of 64 is. Okay, so what is the square root of 64? Well, the answer is 8. Okay, the square root of a number, as a matter of fact, let me just go and write this right here. The square root of a number is a number such that when you multiply it by itself, you get back to that number. So what number times itself is 64? Well, the answer is 8. Now, if you notice here, I'm only taking one step at a time. The worst thing that you can do in math is do multiple steps in your problem, right? So just take one step, write the problem in a simplified manner, and then move on to the next thing. Okay, so we took care of our exponent here, and we have the square root of 64 is 8. So now we're down to this problem right here. We have 8 divided by 1 half times 2. 
So let's go back to our PEMDAS checklist here and ask ourselves, do we have any multiplication or division? Yes, indeed, we do. So we're going to have to do whatever we see first from left to right. And of course, that is division. OK, so we have 8 divided by 1 half. So how do you divide fractions? Well, this should be very easy. What you're going to do is simply change this from division to multiplication by flipping the fraction to the right of the division operator upside down. So here we have 1 half. So we're going to flip this upside down. So this is going to become 2 over 1. That is called the reciprocal. So now we have 8 times 2 over 1. OK, so here we have 8 divided by 1 half, which is equivalent to 8 times 2 over 1, or 8 times 2, which is 16. OK, so now we're down to what? Well, we have 16 times 2. So our final step to solve this problem is to simply multiply 16 times 2, which, of course, is 32. All right, so this is how you solve this problem. And if you understood everything here, well, that is fantastic. It seems to me that you are a certified professional expert in basic mathematics. Now, if you need help in basic math, let me go ahead and recommend my Math Foundations course. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. It's a quick little kind of review course that basically covers fractions, decimals, place value, the order of operations, positive, negative numbers, etc. So again, the worst thing that you can do is ignore something that you don't understand. Or you will continue to make that same mistake if you don't clear things up. So make sure you give basic math its due respect. A lot of people that are trying to learn algebra kind of just really don't want to bother with basic mathematics. But basic math is really the foundation of all other mathematics. So if you're struggling with things like the order of operations, make sure you go back and review. OK, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.